Hello, welcome to Retro Toy Princess. I'm Allison Troy, um, and we are doing a pre-record, so this is not live. So we are talking to you from the past. Um, hopefully you um, take the warning and don't do the thing and make the AI take over. Um, with me today is my guest, Bud, from My Buddy's Customs. Hey, what's up? Um, yeah, so Bud is here, and uh, we're going to color some... Motu today, we're using, using, we're um, doing a Skeletor page from the 1984 Masters of the Universe coloring book. Um, if you watch some of my other coloring videos, this is part of, this is a page from the book I'm doing as a project. Um, I wanna color the whole thing this year. Um, and Bud had picked this picture as well as this picture as to that he was interested in doing. Um, I'm going to start with this. He's going to start with that. If um, I finish early, I'll move to the other one. Um, we're going to go about an hour and a half to two hours um, and just get as much done as we can in that time. So um, anyway, what are you coloring with today, bud? So I am using Prismacolor colored pencils. Which oh, that will show well or not. Yeah, they are amazing. Um, as am I. I've got several. <laughs> God is using, I think, the big 132 yeah. set. 135, I think. 130, something like that. Pull up um, and this is the quick shilling, the shilling of Allison. Um, if you look in the com comment section, the description here on the video, you will see that I'm an Amazon affiliate. And there is a link to the Prismacolor set I'm using as well as the one Bud is using. Um, I get a small commission if you buy anything. Not big, but you know, it helps the channel. It helps me buy more coloring stuff so that I can continue to do this. All right, shilling out of the way. Do you need to do any shilling, bud? Um, no. <laughs> okay. I'm well, good. I'm the only shill here today. <laughs> All right, so I guess, so we're going to get started, and we're just going to, I don't know, chat and stuff. This is yeah. normally where we would say hello to the chat. There's no chat. Um, but if hello, we, no one watching. <laughs> right. But if the stars align, I, I do hope I will hopefully be able to do this as a premiere. So I might be in chat, chatting with everyone from a coffee shop. Oh. Life, so we'll see. I've and never actually I'm, been to a coffee shop. Really? Like an actual one. I mean, I've been to a Starbucks drive-through like twice, yeah. but that's about it. I used to go into Starbucks all, actually when I first started adult coloring, um, at that part of the pandemic where people, um, you could like, you couldn't necessarily sit inside, but places that had outside seating, you could go sit there. Um, my friend mm -hmm. and I, who is the reason I realized adult coloring was a thing, she gave me some coloring books, some adult coloring books. Um, we would go sit at Starbucks and color. So, hi, Kelly, if you're watching today. That is awesome. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. And then I used to, before that, I would go and sit at Starbucks and write. Um, not so much once I started working from home. Um, because then it wasn't so much as, you know, a lot of it would be I'd get off work and Starbucks is closed. So I wanted to start writing or whatever. So I would get off. And then for a bit when I was working at home and super poor, um, I would go work at Starbucks because I had free Wi Fi. Yeah. And it was cheaper to uh, it was cheaper to go to Starbucks and use their Wi Fi than to have my own. Or when I had the shitty roommates. I like it better on By the way. Want to quick apologize if you do hear someone in my background, which is my sister she's playing Baldur's Gate 3, which amazing game. Yeah. So much fun. Well, I can, but I also am going to assume that most of the people watching today are people who um, watch regularly, like um, Oz's streams, or enough of Oz's streams to know the deal. Yeah, they should know. <laughs> they should know. If Matt is there, his sister is probably in the <clears throat> Yep. She's one of my back background characters. <laughs> yeah, she's your supporting cast. She's like, um, yep, like on Home Improvement. And I, uh, on the fence. Yeah, Al. 
Right. Which also I dare dare not challenge her because she could kill me with a with a single look. And there you are. That's what sisters are for, though, right? Yes. Not wrong. Yeah, it's not yes. distracting to me, so. Okay. Yeah, no. Just for all the viewers that like don't yeah, watch our stuff. Right. All the viewers at home, this is part of Bud's sitcom, and he has background. Yep. Characters, so. <laughs> Which a sister is better than a shitty roommate, though. Yes. Have you ever had a shitty roommate or just your family? Oh yes. Okay. Um, I had one 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 of my best friends live with us for a couple years, and at first it was awesome, but then it was not. Yeah, it can be hard, especially if you're super close. Yeah, we aren't so close anymore for <laughs> other reasons, but I mean, yeah. <clears throat> that sort of happens too as you get older. I have a lot of people I was yeah. best besties with at one point that I barely talk to now just because life. I don't know why I'm coloring his arm purple. It should be black. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying you're coloring. I'm just like, wait, his arm's supposed to be black. Oh, yeah, because you're going to do a uh, disco sculpture with him, correct? Yeah. Nice. Yep. Oh, okay. good. I actually never had a disco skeleton. I, I only bought Tila and Evil Lynn in 2000 and X. I never had any of them. I saw them in store. And I thought they were cool, but at the time I was into Power Rangers, I think. Yeah, like I, really, really heavily. I was way more into, I mean, Star, it's always sort of been Star Wars. You know, like everything else has pretty much always been secondary, sort of. Yeah. But also, I just moved to the Pacific Northwest, and I was in a shitty relationship <clears throat> with one of the Carls. So um, there wasn't as much, to, right? There wasn't as much <laughs> toys happening in general, just because he was not particularly enthralled with the fact that toys were a thing. And then he worked for a Christmas at Toys R Us. And because he got a discount, he was okay that year because it meant he was able to buy me stuff, Christmas gifts for a <laughs> discount. But he got me like a bunch of Hello Kitty stuff. And this might surprise people. I'm not much of a Hello Kitty kind of gal. <laughs> There's only one Hello Kitty that I like. <clears throat> it came out like last year or the year before. It yeah. was a Gundam S. SD kit that had a crossover with Hello Kitty and it looks amazing. I um, well, it's funny because you know, Christmas I did a bunch of shirts. I did do some Hello. Kitty. I like I like. Let me rephrase so that uh, people don't misconstrue. Like, it's not that I don't like Hello Kitty. It's just it's not. She's not something I collect as a toy. Like, for me, she falls way more into sort of like. Um, but she's she's like for pictures and for like like if I used to have a Hello Kitty purse and that was cool but like she's not a toy thing to me she's like a decoration an ex an ex accessory yeah yeah so like it's a little different and um, like I enjoy like coloring those Hello Kitty pictures was fun like um, yeah and so that was fun but it just I, I don't know I'm not a Hello Kitty toy person I guess it's, and you know she's really not necessarily primarily toys anyway she's way more of a you know this is a character you buy on shirts and. She's on pens and notebooks, so it's like she's a, I don't know, it's just a different thing. So it was just, it was an odd choice, because I didn't have any Hello Kitty stuff. Except, like, I had a notebook with Hello Kitty. So, should have been one of the, uh, well, at that point, I knew that it was doomed. That was the year his mother sent the, um. She had gone to, uh, you know, in the mall, they have, what is it, the glamour shop or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, so his, she was, and she's probably like in her late 50s, early 60s at the time. She went to the glamour shots and got all dolled up. And there was a picture where her okay. boobs were sort of hanging out and she had one of those feather boas on. And <laughs> she was sort of doing like a Marilyn Monroe thing into the camera. 
And she sent him that picture as part of his Christmas gift. So, uh, and that went on the, uh, that was like in the living room on the, the mantle. So, my uh, mom and sis did the same thing. Um, how old were you when you, when you did those uh, glamour shots with mom? I was probably like 16, maybe? Six, yeah, she was in her, in her teens, but yeah. So we got these two like uh, glamour shots Is that hanging Christmas? on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, you know, it wasn't that I thought it was weird she did it. I thought it was really weird that, that was, her Christmas gift was like to her son was one of the sexy ones. It was just very, yeah, that's it was, not, it was that's a little odd. It was a little odd. Like, it's that odd where you can't quite put your finger on it. And if you have to explain to the explain to the person like why it's odd, like it sounds like you're just making a big deal out of it, but it was odd. Like it made me go like, huh? Actually, it's like, what is it? No, it's not an electric. Con what is it? The is it Otopole? No, Otopole is like the. Like I saw, unconnected from the. No, Otopole is son and mom. It's one of those Shakespearean things, something like that. But anyway, it just it was it was the year that everything was sort of falling apart between us anyway. So like having that on top of it was just it was. It was a lot to process. So. As you can hear, my dog has her squeak pig. <laughs> right. It sounds like a happy dog, though. Oh, yeah. A little too happy. So happy she jumped on me multiple times today, waking, waking me up after I just fell asleep. Because I have one of those uh, folding glass, glass doors to my room. Yeah. And our old dog used to break into my room a lot, so the door's kind of cracked. It doesn't really sit on the hinge well, and so the door can be opened easily unless I actually, like, lock it. Yeah. But where I sleep, I sleep right next to the door, and when there's uh, people out in the other room talking, I usually like to crack my door open so I can talk and just, I guess, watch, which... Might yeah. sound weird, but <laughs> but like uh, you know, you know convert, conversate with the people in the other room. But I can't shut the door unless I get back up and I'm already comfy and right. all that. I don't want to get up, so I just shut the door as best I can, which is not good enough. And that dog just knocks that door open, jumps on me like she hasn't seen me in 20 years. Oh, well, it's fun, you know, because people are always like, cats are so much easier than dogs. If I go in the bathroom too long, like, the cats will be, like, thumping at the door trying to get in. Uh -huh. So, like, I, I sort of can relate a little bit because it's like we don't ever really close. Like, obviously, we keep the front door closed because, yeah. you know, weirdos outside. <laughs> but, um, and they're not outdoor kitties because that's not safe. <laughs> But, um, you know, like the bathroom, I cl you know, I close the bathroom because I prefer to have privacy if I'm going to be in the shower or having to make use of the facilities for bodily function sort of things. Yeah. Matt and I have been together a really long time, but there are just certain things he does not need to see happen. Right. <laughs> the last time people saw any of those happen was... When I was a baby and my parents were cleaning diapers because I couldn't clean myself. Um, but those, the, the one kitten especially, our brand new kitten, will just, he'll sit at the door and just cry like like he's been abandoned if I close the door on him. It's, yeah. really, it's cute, but it's also annoying. So it's like, I can definitely relate to the, the doggy because these cats at times are about as needy as dogs. How long have you had your dog? Um, had it for about four months, maybe five. Oh, so it's still a puppy? Oh, yeah. Because last uh, summer, maybe, we had lost our, our uh, other dog we had, yeah. Cash. She was a Great Dane um, black, black Lab. Are you ready? Great Danes and Black Labs are both such good dogs to have. Yeah. He was a good dog. He didn't really like being pets, so I'm getting all the pets in with uh, with her. 
It helps, you know, like... He also I, didn't like playing with toys. He just liked being moody and sleeping. <laughs> well, my first... One of my first cats that I had when I moved up here, after I, Carl and I... Carl, that Carl bro and I broke up. He wasn't a big toy cat either, but these cats we have now are just all about... All about the toys. Okay, so like, the and they have a murder you gate, which is like their little area, but it's full of like toy birds and toy mice. And like our middle cat, Augustus, will rip open the cat, the bird guts from the bird Actually, toys, and just like they're I'm stuffing all over the place. I'm gonna take it's funny. That's why he can't be an outdoor cat, because literally there would be bird carcasses all over the place. Mm -hmm. And he's normally a very sweet cat, but for whatever reason, you give him a chirpy bird toy, and it's murder. So, but yeah, I don't know. Our first cat, my first cat, because I had him before Matt and I met Henry. He was just not a particularly, he had like one or two toys he would play with, but otherwise he was not about toys. So... Yeah, I used to have two uh, uh, Russian Russian blue cats oh, back when I was a teen. Yeah, they were, they were amazing. One of them was named Miko, and I found him outside. I was like, I, I think I was getting ready to go to school or something, and I walked outside, and he was just sitting there sifting through the through the trash can. Yeah. So I just opened up the front door. I'm like, "Do you wanna Do you wanna come come in?" And he's went trotting in. I'm like, "Okay, I guess you're mine now." Oh, well, that's often... Of course, we we checked to make sure he wasn't, like, yeah. owned by anyone, but... Well, cats are often they're pretty good about choosing people that they like to... Especially if they're at all sort of been living outside on their own. You should be able to grab her on the left and pull her down to you. Oh, Oh, yep. there he is, just got skeletal. I just looked up to see, to see your brother. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's coming together. Yep. It's a, it's funny because, you know, like, everyone now is sort of all about getting a disco skeletal, but I also remember when everyone was constantly making fun of disco skeletal on, like, message boards and stuff. And like suddenly now everybody wants one, but back back in the two thousand and X period when it was live and happening, everybody hated that Skeletor. Oh, how things change over time, and you become right. nostalgic for them. I actually want to get um. Uh, there's two of the two thousand X. Skeletors, I want to get one to swap armor with uh, Keldor so he has the proper 2000X armor. Yeah. And then I want to get another one so I can do a Disco Skeletor. I want. I don't want the full 2000X Cobra Con. I want the Cobra Con 2000X gun. Um, because obviously the extra head that came with Camo Con is sort of the 2000X head. And I have an extra Cobra Con that I want to, because the 2000X Cobra Con has like gold and stuff. So I specifically got an extra one so I could pop that extra Camo Con head onto him and then paint him up. But the gun is different enough that I kind of want to find a gun. And I found one at one point on eBay, but the dude wanted 30 bucks for it. And I'm like, that's a lot for, um, for a gun. When I could just buy the whole 2000X Cobra Con complete for like so you 60 bucks. Which is obviously more, but I'm going to have to pay a lot anyway. <laughs> Might as well get all of it. Yeah. But. <clears throat> I think like t during the two, 2000X era, I mostly just watched the show because I... I think I came into it a little bit late. Like I was just randomly surfing the like a uh, TV and stuff, and then I found it. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, He Man's back!" <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing it. I haven't thought about that in years. But I didn't watch it, and then I found the figures, and I got the Tila and the Evil Lynn. 
Um, I wanted the Orko, but never found him in store because I thought he looked cool. I don't like, I didn't like Orko, but I liked the design of him for 2000 and X. Um, but didn't it actually, I mean, because, you know, like everyone talks about now how like the cartoon was like all over the place and it was hard to find it. And it makes sense because I could never find it on whenever I would try to watch it. Um, which obviously wouldn't happen now because everything you have that on demand option. Or it's on Netflix and you just watch it when you watch it. Um, but it wasn't until like 2009, 2000, yeah, it was 2009 ish. And um, I was doing, I was throwing a big 80s party. And as part of that 80s party, I um, ordered like. Um, you know, like some, I went on eBay and got like, and the uh, Wake Me Up Before You Go Go video by uh, George mm -hmm. Mike Graham. He has that shirt that says Choose Life. So I bought one of those and I got like a bunch of like 80s stuff. And in, in between that, I picked up one of those Knickerbocker Annie dolls from like 1982 because those came with a gold locket. And I wanted to wear that locket as part of my outfit for the night. Um, nice. During that, I came across because um, I didn't know classics was happening, and I found the um, Motu Classics Tila, and I was like, "Wait, what the hell is this? This is awesome!" Um, and I was like, "But she's so expensive. She was, you know, like out of pack, mint complete, but out of package." And I'm like, twenty five dollars is a lot of money for an action figure. <laughs> right back um, back then. I had bought it, um, and then I found the Green Goddess, and then Shira and Adora. So I ended up spending like a hundred bucks to get like four four classics. And of course, at the time, I was like that's just so much money, and sort of. And of course, now all of those figures go for quite a bit more than that. Um, and then I got like the Evil Land for thirty, and I complained. I'm like, it's so expensive, thirty dollars for Evil Land, whatever. And um, but through that, I started rewatching all of the. Um, I start. I rewatched Filmworks and Filmworks, Filmation, and then after Filmation, I watched the 2000 and X one. Um, and I was like, wow, I wish I. This did actually come on reliably because this is a pretty solid. I enjoy 2000X more than I did rewatching Filmation. Filmation is just too. Yeah. Like, like I get why people enjoy it. I don't want to make fun of anybody who enjoys 2000X, but um, it just, I don't, it hasn't aged well for me. And I, yeah. And I say that, but I also remember thinking a lot of it was really cheesy even when I was a kid. But to be fair, I did start reading like Stephen King at 10. So I was, you know, the same time I was watching New Man, I was reading Stephen King in the commercial breaks. So I was <laughs> probably a little bit more sophisticated than the average, you know, person watching New Man at 10 back in the day. So. But, you know, some of those episodes are really good. The Tila's Quest one is really good. Yeah. That one where Evelyn and Tila are stuck in the desert together. Yep. Super good. And what's funny is, like, you know, everyone was sort of complaining about Masters of the Universe Revelations. Oh, it's all Tila and Evelyn. And, like, it, I just kind of remember thinking, like, it's sort of a sequel to two of the best episodes of that TV show. Like, okay, sure, Jan. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. And that whole weird backlash with all of that is still really odd to me. Yeah. But. It's like, did you all not watch the PSAs at the end of each episode talking yeah. about, like, don't be shitty people or, you know, don't be crappy people? Yeah. Oh, you can say shit on my show. Even oh, okay. Though, <laughs> even though this will probably air early in the morning on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I would assume that based on when I air, if there are people who are super churchy, they're at church and not watching me, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Like, just sort of the shittiness of it, and I don't know. It's sort of, it's funny, because a lot of that really, like, Star Wars was sort of the same. I like the sequel trilogy. I'm not saying they're perfect. Yeah. They've got their flaws. I enjoy I like, like Star Wars. Like, 
I love the actors. I love the set designs. I love the video videography. The story, though, for me, just was kind of hit and miss. Yeah, but I mean, also, like, you know, my sort of point has always been we didn't really go to the old Star Wars movies for the story. We kind of went just to enjoy the space offeringness of it. Um, you know, mm-hmm. the movies, they're enjoyable as Star Wars. Like, they're not the best movies, but they're great Star Wars. Um, you know, and I say this as somebody who read all of the expanded universe books from like 1990. Well, you know, the first ones came out like in 78. I read those much later. I was not, um, I was, I'm old enough to have seen them all in the theater a couple times, you know, like the original release Star Wars seven times. I was not old enough to successfully read like the splinter of the mind's eye and all this adult. Yeah. Good, but I read them all later. Um, there were some pretty bad books in those, you know, like in the. the I think the universe, first so. one I read was The Glove of Darth Vader. Yeah, like the. the yep, yeah, I remember. Those were the. Um, like young adult books, young I think. Adult books. Those were not particularly yeah. great. Um, all I knew is, like, I, I knew the films. But I didn't know there were books. Yeah. So I just like grabbed all the books that I could. You know, so Star Wars is can be hit or miss. It's just about enjoying this the world and the universe. And mm-hmm. but for a really long time, like Star Wars was really hard. And then I met some peeps who were cool. Um Brick actually Brick something actually helped because he did a couple things for Star Wars back in like May, I think. Yeah, it was around May the fifth. That sort of like helped me realize, you know, like Star Wars doesn't have to be angry fanboys. It can be fun again. Yeah. Um, and that sort of happened for me with Revelation. And Revolution, like, you know, Kayla and Johnny did all of that amazing fun stuff. And it was just kind of nice to sort of be able to openly right. enjoy all of, the, you know, like revelations and stuff with people. And, realize that it's really a small group of people who don't who enjoy d- don't small enjoy group of loud loud voices yeah because i mean there are people who didn't like it that i know that don't like it for who don't like it for valid reasons but they're also not being jerks about it you know like yeah so i don't know it's been interesting like just to sort of get that appreciation of sort of Motu region. Thanks, Kayla and Johnny. <laughs> With the assumption being that the lot of them are part of this. I'm sure they will. Kayla and Johnny are pretty good about you know, community and stuff. So they're good people. Yeah. It's it's also kind of been fun what you know, because Kayla has never seen Motu before. Um so it's been really cool, sort of, you know, her. It's funny because, like, you know, when we did those, like, she didn't, you know, like, we're having to trade the fact that Tila and the sorceress are, you know, like, mother and daughter is like a spoiler. And it's like, it was weird because it's like, well, we've just all known this since like 1983, 84, because that's always been so much of a story. It was, it was, it was fun, but it was also really sort of, Stuff that has hasn't been a spoiler to anyone who likes Motu for decades suddenly being a spoiler because Kayla's new to it. So that was also pretty fun, I thought. So has she watched uh, Secret of the Sword yet or no? She has not. And we've actually been talking Ooh. about yeah, doing an episode of um I geek the F out a very special episode or something, you know, some, something with it where um, she gets to watch Secret of the Sword for the first time. So I've heard the same with the 80, 87 movie. Yeah. It's, yeah. She definitely wants to do that one also. And some of the um, revolutions, revelation mm-hmm. stuff will make sense to her too. Cause some of it references mm-hmm. that movie. And so I don't know. It was just cool. Like she doesn't, she doesn't have 40 years of Masters of the Universe fandom under her belt, so it was really cool to sort of 
right. Not really. It's not like you're really experiencing it yourself. But getting to see somebody else experience something from the for the first time is kind of cool. I thought. So. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely a fun. It was a fun experience, and it just helped remind me not everyone is a jerk. There are a lot of cool people in the fandom. Well, everyone is a stodgy, mean-hearted old person who like is mad that things are a little different. Yeah. Room. Shitting all over the turtles of Grayskull. Mm. Right. It's like I, I get if turtles weren't your thing, maybe you aged out during that time, but you should never yuck someone else's yum. Well, also, I'm of the opinion that. Motu is 40 years old. And you have to do whatever you have to do to get the kids into stuff. And if sticking them with turtles gets two or three new people that are under the age of 500 like, to, to in, be interested in He-Man and buy some Masters of the Universe toys, like, let's not complain about that, guys. Because there are probably a couple of people who are going to buy Turtles of Grayskull stuff who have no clue about any Masters of the Universe stuff. Other than, oh, look, Turtles with that, that dude in the furry diaper. <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, no, stuff is good, I think. It's good for... Um, yeah, I mean, much is a franchise. It's good for franchises to like get some new blood in them. I just wish people were able to sort of identify the fact that you got to bring new people in and you got to try new stuff that maybe isn't 100% what the uh, original stuff was, but that's okay. So. Although I won't lie, a uh... Motu Thundercats crossover with toys would be amazing. That definitely. Well, I'm surprised that has not already happened, to be honest. That one's a. Like, I mean, they've done it in the comics a couple times already. Yep. So. And with the artist that's doing the uh, mini comics for the Turtles of Grey yeah. Gray Skull, also. Yeah, and they could even use the same buck to do some Thundercat toys. So. Mm hmm. I mean, because Thundercats and the origin scale would be pretty epic, I think. Oh, yeah. That is something that definitely needs to happen, guys. You have to right click it and pick up. There you go. So I've got to. Disco almost done. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's definitely looking pretty good. I'm just being fussy about my wall and um, <laughs> making stuff out the window. So. Angie? Oh, Daddy wants to know. All right, there we go. All right, sorry about that. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, uh, if, well, if I didn't say it, I meant to. I knew that sort of us recording this, you know, like at this time would be, um, you know, you live, a, you have a life to live. So, yep. so no worries. I'm just glad we were able to do this. You. Yeah, we're on the short list of people I wanted to, <laughs> to hang out with whenever I had the idea of doing this. So that's awesome. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Like you're, I, well, you do amazing. You know, like sort of my not my first love, but one of the first things that really <clears throat> I had originally really just planned on doing costumes. I didn't really even think about the coloring book stuff happened sort of accidentally, and I'm not complaining at all because it's been really good and I'm really enjoying it, but like it was pretty accidental that I realized, you know, you know, and there are a lot of people who do do customs and while there is the argument that everyone, it's sort of an art form and everyone's custom work is going to be different, 
at the same time, I'm like, I want to bring something a little fresh to YouTube for toys. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I realized nobody was doing anything with sort of vintage -y coloring books. And there's, you know, like some pretty cool stories and some cool pictures. And I realized all of the people that I sort of like to do YouTube. Um, I think you had just started, you maybe had released your first video too as I was getting ready to start all of this. Um, but I also realized there were so many people who were artistic and creative that like I would be able to invite people on to do stuff like this and there would be plenty of people, you know, who would be cool to hang out and talk more to or yeah. whatever. And, you know, but it, it's also fun when it's a creative person like yourself, you know. It's also fun when it's like Lawrence who is not super creative and he's getting to try creative stuff. <laughs> I wanted somebody like yourself who is a little creative and sort of knows about art stuff. Believe it or not, uh, high school art I failed. Um, I believe that because high school art is <laughs> less about your actual talent and whether or not you can follow your teacher's instructions. That's what it was. Because, uh, he was a college, uh, a former college teacher, then going to teach a bunch of kids. Yeah. And that did not mesh well. And I remember one time I had broken my arm, so I had a full like cast oh my God. on my arm with the hand that I uh, draw, yeah. draw with. And we were doing a self-portrait, mm -hmm. and we were doing it with uh, charcoals. So he took photos of us. And uh, um, we had to color it reversed. Yeah. So like uh, what was black, we used these uh, pliable erasers. Yeah. So like we would do the whole picture, like would be uh, charcoal and black. And then our pencil was the pliable eraser. <clears throat> and I was working on my face. And it was done perfectly. Like, it looked exactly like me in every way possible. And he walked by and he's like, no, 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 this is wrong. And I'm like, no, it looks like me. It's a self-portrait. He's like, the point of this is not to be a self-portrait. I'm like, but this is a self-portrait. So he went in, charcoaled in my entire face, oh my God. and then did his version, which looked horrible. Right. So afterwards, I went over his and did mine again. And he was not happy about it. So uh, I ended up failing the class. But then the picture looked so good because they had to hang it up in the walls that I got invited to the, um, I think it was like the Chicago High School Art Show. Oh, nice. And he wanted to put my, my picture in. I'm like, you mean the one you gave me an F on? Right. And so I was like, no, because we had to like, we had to have like a parent sign something. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. So I uh, may have went in to school with a duffel bag and took all my artwork. Nice. Well, that is your artwork. So. Yeah, it's always weird to me. Like, I was fortunate I never had a teacher like that in elementary or high school. Like, I had really good sort of art. In college, it was different. But, like, I think much like the guy you just described, a lot of the professors I had in college were not... Um, I, I would say they were probably more along the lines of failed artists who, like, had probably tried to have a big art career and then it didn't quite work out. And so teaching art in college was sort of secondary. So it's all these people, all these kids showing up with, like, dreams and, you know. So I always felt like my art professor in college, who really just left me feeling really discouraged about art, um, I honestly feel like it was just like he was so discouraged about art and the state of his art that 
he made sure to go out of his way for people who were who were actually enthusiastic about art and you know maybe ha I, I mean i don't want to say this in a way that sounds um sort of stuck you know like i've got this big ego but you know like i've got pretty artistically yeah. talented like i'm not i'm no picasso but i'm you know i do better than the average like wine and paint party participant so um so i and but you know the other people that were in the class that had a hard time were people that i was envious of because they were so talented um so yeah i just i i think that happens a lot with and i've noticed it more with um art teachers who are dupes you know that like mm -hmm. I think maybe and there are a lot of men who are art teachers. In my experience, it could you know not not all art teachers who are men, um, but I think there are a lot of men who are art teachers. Um, there could be women like this. I've just never had a woman art teacher who was like this. Um, but just because maybe they didn't quite get the art career they wanted, sort of go out of their way to make other people's lives miserable who have a modicum of talent. So. Yeah, there was one time I took, um, this was back in like maybe fifth or sixth grade. Yeah. It was like one of his first year or two that he was uh, teaching. And I remember I did a picture of Mr. Freeze from the Batman and, and Robin film. And it looked exactly like uh, Arnold. And I went in after school hours to show him yeah. just because I was really proud of it. And again, he was like, no, 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 this is wrong. This is wrong. He took a red pen and corrected oh my, my drawing. Oh my God, what? I was like, dude. Yeah, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> no. Yeah, he sounds like a like you, Like, you like want to give me notes? Cool, fine. But like, Write it down on a separate piece of paper or show me on a separate piece right. of paper. Break out some scratch paper, Carlos. We're going to call him right. Carlos because he's not even a Carlos, actually. He could be a Carlos. So. <laughs> but what's his name? Crodwell? Something? Yeah, I don't know. Right. That's not like, I mean, if he's an RT, you know, he had like some tracing paper or some like onion skin or something. That he could have like traced over it to show you what he meant. And then I'm just gonna That's just shit. All right. Man, I hate people like that. Yeah. Alright, so I have to run something on my dad. So um I'll try to get him for a while. And you know, that kills again, that kills people's love on the art. Yeah. You could have been a famous artist, bud, and then that dude ruined it. Yep. I looked at almost it. forgot to color his feet. <laughs> oh yeah, don't forget the feet. And so it was one of my art teachers. I did look up the teacher that was very mean to me at one point to see what they were doing now, and they're they're dead. So yeah, he might be gone now. He was definitely in his fifties when I was in high school, and that was twenty years ago. I mean, I'm not happy that he's dead, but I'm not sad he's dead. I, <laughs> I hope he's in a better place. Maybe I hope mine's in a shitty place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's just I, the, that sort of phenomena that was odd to me when I think back of sort of all the teachers I had who were like mean people it's just like how can you like you know and you'll hear people like oh well you know kids are terrible and yeah kids are terrible but like you can't just be mean to kids who are terrible because if kids are terrible it's often usually because their home life is miserable and you as an adult being mean to them is not going to help 
Right. Anything, it's going to make them worse. But. I actually had a teacher in a middle school that would make make fun of me because I was sick a lot as a as a yeah. kid, and coaxed the other kids in the class to poke uh, fun at me. Ah. Well, joke was on him in uh, sixth grade when I got really sick and went into a coma. Oh, no. So <laughs> that stopped at least for a while. Well, yeah. Then it started back up. And now I almost feel bad every time we make fun of your kidney. Oh, no, it's it's totally fine. Well, when I make fun of it, I'm more making fun of the, you know, like, not, yeah, I'm not actually making fun of, like, your kidney. No, no, no. <laughs> You're just uh, shooting it, the shit and but, yeah, it was just the way making that one, one time they casual were, jokes. Like, the one time, it was Oz, I think, even, who said it when he was like, well, you know, because you're not going, you know, why aren't you going to Target? And he was even joking when he was like, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh, this is the perfect time to go, yeah, why with your one kidney aren't you going to Target? God, you're so selfish. <laughs> so it's uh, my fault uh, that the toy industry yeah. is the way it is because I don't go to stores. A bad kidney and you can't go to the store because of your kidney. It's your fault. But yeah. that was the joke I was making that there are actually people who yeah, are yeah. Fit like that. And, be mean to you about your kidney, like I I figured you understood where I was going because you oh, yeah. joking back or joking like building into it, but sort of realize sometimes not everyone not everyone one knows my sense of humor and two gets my you know like I'm sometimes pretty um deadpan yeah i'm pretty serious too sometimes when yeah I it. it's not always necessarily evident that it's a joke but nine times out of ten it's sarcasm if i'm saying it <laughs> it's like the old carrie fisher's uh saying if my life wasn't true or if my life wasn't funny it would just be true huh. Right. So, because of that, I often sort of lean into finding comedy and terrible, awful things that have happened. Yeah. Same. So, and like I said, you're, the fact that you started riffing on the statement as well had me pretty confident you thought it was a joke, but. <laughs> I realize now we should make sure because the people at home watching this right now may not right <laughs> realize that it was just a joke. So don't cancel me. My ukulele is over there. So yeah. The song. <laughs> and it takes a lot to get canceled. Or very little. Or very little. Right. It's either or. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Play stupid games, get stupid re, re rewards, you know? Yeah, that's true. It just seems like the people who actually need to get canceled never do. So. Nah, right. I don't know why I'm doing the curtains red, but they're going to be red. I think that. <laughs> um, I My brain just went to pick up the color, and I'm like, all right. No, no that makes sense. I was sort of leaning toward red as well because I think it's... Red and green yeah, contrast think, all together. Yeah. Well, that, and I believe, and uh, one mini comic, The King of Grey Skull, where Skeletor's, in, which is where a lot of these sort of pictures are in, you know sort of inspired by that story um because these were all drawn sort of even though it this the book this is from have 1983 characters in it um a lot of it was inspired by like the wave one mini comics um and in mm -hmm. the King of grayskull um when tila um is in castle grayskull and skeletor tricks her because this the the writing in that comic 
states that Skeletor disguises himself, but then Alcala doesn't draw him in a disguise. So if you don't actually read that, you think Tila's an idiot because like she should recognize Skeletor. <laughs> in the actual story that he covers his face with like clay and disguises it so he looks like a normal person. And then wipes it off once, you know, he's sort of tricked her. But anyway, in that mini comic, they show like a curtain and it's red. So, so that's why I assumed red is because, you know, that early, early wave one mini comics, there were red curtains in the castle. I was actually thinking about the, uh, let's see if I can grab it here. Oh, my phone flipped. Oh. Sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Thinking of the flag for the castle, Great oh, Great yeah. Skull, where it's like red and I was probably gonna add some like orange to it too. No, that would work for sure. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I've got mine mine's of well you can't see where I'm pointing because that I'm not <laughs> That has <laughs> the camera, but where Skeletor's sword is pointing in this picture, my castle is vaguely over in that direction. And but I've got the flag turned to the other side. Actually, according to this, Skeletor is pointing at Snake Snake Mountain. Uh oh. And there you go. <laughs> yeah, my Snake Mountain is in sort of in front of us where we are. It's on the other side of all my computers. I have everything off to my to my left. Yeah, I'm almost. I don't know where I'm going to put a turn. I'm basically not going to unbox the turn because I got my shipping notice today. Nice. I'm not going to be able to. Well, because when I ordered it, the goal was, you know, at that point we figured by now we would be in a bigger place, and that's not going to be until sort of later this summer. Um, so it's just I'm going to get take some pictures of it when it arrives, and I'm just going to leave it in the brown mailer. I'm not even a fish modi out yet. I just sort of put it in the bed. I'm gonna have to unbox the uh, <laughs> the four boxes of Big Bad Toy Store stuff that I've been like hoarding for months to like unbox <laughs> at some point. I'm gonna unbox all of that and so that I don't think I could I could wait that long. The longest I did was a week. And that was because I wanted to open a bunch of stuff on like uh Oz's yeah. show. It's I think I had like twelve figures. It was for a while. It wasn't, and then a lot of it, though. There, a lot of it is my extra figures that I got, so that I can. Oh. them. So I don't tend to unbox all of that until I'm actually going to work on it. True. I do have three battle cats still sitting no, in, in the like box. I haven't actually opened my original battle cat yet because I had them just just displayed um, in box. Um, but now I need to open that because I need to display Battle Cat now. But he's been in this box buried, so. <laughs> Let me read you. And my vintage crystal, vintage crystal, my vintage crystal castle is also in that stack of boxes. And that is definitely, let's me go over here next to the uh, Origins Gray Skull. So I need to. This weekend, I'm going to take a little time and not do anything other than try to finish setting up my display and stuff. And then I can do like a room tour, collection tour for the for my channel because you know that's one of the things you're supposed to do once you have a YouTube channel, right? Oh yeah, I should probably do that <laughs> at some point. I think it, I think part of the reason everyone does it is one, people are interested in what shit you have, and also it's an easy video. So look at all the toys. Like mine wouldn't be a long video, but I do have a lot of figures, so like I'd have to like I don't know slowly pan across each figure. I I have this in the back. It's, it would be a, of course a parody channel, but I've had in the back of my mind for a while to do sort of like a second channel that's one hundred percent just a parody channel with like all the sarcasm and call that one. <laughs> but I was like I should go and get a bunch of creepy porcelain dolls. Um, that I wouldn't keep. They wouldn't be a forever thing. It would just be like for the video and then return them or sell them or whatever. But do like a collection video of all these creepy porcelain dolls and be like, this one is Matilda. Her last mm. owner fell into a pond and drowned and her face were eaten by the koi. 
she is haunted. Nice. And just basically give each of them this like haunted background story and how their previous owner died in some reason. And each time, of course, it would get more and more ridiculous. And so that'd be funny. Yeah, it would, it would be, you know, but you, I'd have to do it as though I'm totally, like, everyone else does their collection videos where you're just totally serious, totally into it. Like, this is real, people. I know one thing I definitely got to find for mine, because it's kind of a namesake for my channel, but I do have my vintage, my, my buddy doll. Oh, my God. He doesn't like, have his shoes, but he has the rest of his clothes except for his hat. So I, I was, of course, a little bit, I'm a little bit older, obviously. Than yeah. Um, that came out not long after, like, Child's Play is base. Chucky from, like, Child's Play was inspired yeah. by that doll. Like, and I, I think it came out in 83, 82. And my buddy? Um, that was close I to think, that. right? I, I should Google it, because it was a little bit later. Um, just because I know oh. I was older when it came out. Um, I always had it, so like... Kid sister. Yep, my um, sister actually had that, so I had, we had both. Yeah. One of several dolls said to be the inspiration. So my buddy, uh, wow, was a toy brown made by Hasbro in 1985. Oh. Uh-oh. -uh. Kid sister. I know there's two versions of the dolls. Ones that have the flat painted eyes and the others that have the blinking eyes. And I definitely had the blinking eyes. And mine had brown hair because I also have brown, brown hair. So it looks like and standing, he was first mentioned in a ad in 1985. And so, um, not an ad in a newspaper article. Seeking safe toys that sell the New York Times, June 1st, no, February 10th, 1985. And so, but yeah, so I remember. <clears throat> but my 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 uncle's first wife bought one for um their son. Of course he wasn't happy about it because it was a doll, so but well she wanted to buy one for him and he said no. And then when they got divorced, the first thing she did was go and buy my cousin and my buddy doll. So I have to say mm -hmm. she, um and there were times where members of my family disliked her because it was not an easy, it was not an easy divorce. But I will say she definitely was a hard, she, she definitely pulled some things that I'm like, you go girl. Like, I definitely have some respect for that woman because she, you know, like, I was just hardcore the second. And not, I mean, out of, you know, like you could say definitely out of spite, but he, he quite enjoyed that doll, so. Oh yeah, I slept with mine every night for yeah, years. You would cuddle it. My uncle was just mad. Yep. It's like a teddy bear, and it's like the whole point of those toys were to teach kids compassion. Which maybe is a reason why I love the body pillows now. Like I always have to have my arm around some kind of pillow. Yeah. Or I have one of those like pillows where it wraps around your neck and then goes down your sides. Yeah. When I when I was. Uh, Sounds so weird because I was single for most of my life because I'm I'm for I'm an unpleasant person to date sometimes. <laughs> uh, but when I was single a lot, I it was either you know my cat and a teddy bear or just the teddy bear when I didn't have cats. Um, now I have somebody, so I don't necessarily need the. That would be a horror film where my teddy bear because I still have the teddy bear that I would cuddle with when there were no cats. The teddy bear come to life and try to kill people. <laughs> so that would that would you know that's a movie they would make. So I had a friend that was really creeped out by my my buddy doll. So I would take him and like um I sit him down on his computer chair and have the computer chair face towards the computer. So when he'd wake up and he's not really a morning person, he comes trudging with his coffee and he turned his chair and he jumped and that coffee went flying. 
dolls just sitting there. Then I'd like hide it in his bed under the covers or in the shower. There was this person um, <clears throat> for my birthday a few years back. She gave me this creepy doll and she's like, I found it. It was just sitting on my front porch one morning. And I don't know if this is true or if she was just trying to scare me. And I was like, oh, look. She's like, it's just such a, and it's like this, we call it ugly baby. Um, and she was like, I guess trying to freak me out or whatever. Cause she, you know, yeah. she and I weren't friends really. Um, and we later came to an understanding and made peace and we're friendly, but at the time we did not care for one another. Um, and I assumed she did it thinking it would creep me out, but instead, but it actually creeped her out. So I chased her around that night at my party. I had, it was after I got a couple drinks in me, of course. But um, I chased her around and I was like, oh, look at your baby. Mommy, why are you getting rid of me? You know, <laughs> I dance and chased her. And she was screaming at the end, going, oh my God, get it away. And then um, our, our one cat, Tori, who unfortunately passed and is no longer with us. But she loved yeah. that ugly baby. She would just cuddle up with it and chew on it and carry it around. And even though it will randomly just be in places it shouldn't be, like it technically lives under one of the chairs, which is where Tori would leave it. But every so often, I'll like come out of the bathroom and I'll just be sitting there in the middle of the floor. I'm just like, no, not today, ugly baby, not today. I'll take, I'll try to find it later and take a picture and put it on Instagram. Well, I'll put it on, the, awesome. on the day this episode finally airs, but I'll, I'll send you a picture of it so you can see what the ugly baby looks like, because it's pretty ugly. Like, it's just, it's not a cute or clever name. It's the reality. It's pretty ugly. So, but it was just funny. She, I guess, thought she was going to freak me out or something, and I, I adored chasing her around with it. Like, Mommy, why are you giving me away? Don't you love me anymore, Mommy? I'm your own <laughs> baby. So. It's like I had a friend in high school, and he was deathly mortified by all uh, female sanitary products. Um, so there was one day I chased him around class with tampons. He screamed like a little girl. It was beautiful. Nice. Yeah. And he was kind of a dick sometimes. So it was extra rewarding to hear him like freak out and scream because a tampon in a complete wrapper sealed. It's not like it was even out of the wrapper. It was like sealed in a container, like that plastic pouch they come in that's all mm -hmm. sealed up. And I was like, look, it's sealed. It's safe. It can't touch you. It's like a Twinkie. I don't know if you ever ate a Twinkie again after that. <laughs> Now, see, that's when you dip it in some ketchup and then throw it in his face. <laughs> you dip it in the Kool-Aid, like in the commercial. That cracked me up back in the... Remember that in the old commercials where they were? Uh -huh. Or they would spill some blue water in the... <laughs> They're like, look, this, the damn thing has wings. And they pour, like, some blue water in it. And, like, look, the water is just soaked up and it doesn't drip at all. It's like, that water is pretty thin. Anyway. <laughs> I had a f um not oh, like a friend at school, but someone I knew at school. Speaking of like someone doing like that kind of thing, and this was so bizarre and gross. I don't know why. He brought in a plastic baggie filled with his dad's foot callus dust. Yeah, and he was just showing it off to everyone. I'm just like, why? Yeah. Yeah, it was really bizarre. Yeah. yeah, see, that's different. That's not in a container. So yeah. Like, that's too far. There's funny and there's gross funny, but there's too far. Yeah, yeah there too is too far. far. That was that was too far. Yeah, that's too far. Now, one thing that was funny is we had a friend, uh, not a friend, but again, someone we knew at school who brought in a little baggies filled with powdered sugar and he was going around giving the people like it was uh coke nice did he make money at least uh cops came <sighs> somebody always fucking calls the cops uh, 
I mean, it didn't help that he was walking around at like a recess and uh, dipping his finger in the bag and eating it, rubbing his teeth with it. That's how you do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I've never done drugs, kids. Mm. Drugs I've never bad. done. Right. I saw what they did to my friends in high school. It made them all look really weird. If it wasn't green, I didn't do it. <laughs> oh, early 80s. All right. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to go for a ride with these curtains as well. I'm sort of getting to the end of a bunch of pencils tonight. It's cool. <laughs> Be able to, I have... Um, both of these sort of sets over here, the uh, botanical and the under the sea one, I have sets that I haven't even opened yet of all of those because Amazon had both of those sets on sale for like 10 bucks right before Christmas. And both sets have colors that I go through really fast. So I bought a couple of them so that, and then there's like the two colors in there I barely use. So I just have extras of that color that I will always have extras of. Maybe I'll do that as a channel giveaway once I have 500 members. Look, it's a bundle of pencils I never use. <laughs> you want vermilion orange, right? Right? So. I'll, I think I'll black is my most used color. Um, I think actually it's weird. I, like I go through black, but I don't go through it that much. I don't. I used to use a lot for like shading and stuff. Um, and now I tend to not, but I, my, my, and of course this is also partly because of um, like all the shorts I do. Like I use a lot of cream and eggshell, but that's also what I use for blonde hair and for skin is those two colors. Mm -hmm. So I go through a lot of those. I go through a lot of hot pink because you know, between Barbie, Gem and the Holograms and she -Ra, yeah. <laughs> all the pink. All the pink all the time. But I mean, I guess this one that I'm using right now is poppy red, and I go through this pretty often. But it's a nice sort of mid-tone. It's a little orange, but not super orange. Um, so I can, I'll use, like right now I'm putting this down as like a base coat. And then I'll go in with like a darker red and sort of shade it in. Yeah. That's kind of what I've been doing. Yeah, that's pretty, um, you know, it, well, it's, it's standard when you've sort of done it, you know, been doing art for a little to realize that sort of a darker shade to shade it is um, going to give you depth and make it cool. Yeah. But it took a while to get that. Like, I, um, it's a lot of stuff I colored that I deleted the videos because they looked bad because I didn't. Even though when I would do art, like art art for myself with colored pencils, I would like the shading would be perfect. It took me a really long time to sort of grasp, to get my brain wrapped around the idea of doing that sort of adult level coloring. You know, like I would color my own art even with these coloring pages. I was still coloring really flat like I did when I was a kid for a long time. It's yeah, you definitely go through this like stages of coloring flat and then you're kind of middle school, high school where like you hard color the borders of everything and then soft color yeah. the center. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It was just really interesting that like it took me and it clicked because I, you know, I do a lot of adult coloring, um, you know, and, and those I have no problem sort of shading and but for some reason doing all these old pictures, like I was just having the hardest time sort of remembering that you need to step it up a little. You need to, um, you know, sort of t t approach these old pages the same way you do the adult coloring art or if I'm doing an actual art piece. Um, and I'm finally getting there. Um, there's still some times where it comes across really flat, but you know, some nights I film three videos. Um, and they're two to three hours <laughs> each, so sometimes I'm just going to phone you that, I realize. <laughs> you know, some nights when, yeah, especially if it's like I 
feel like I need a video of Motu or Barbie or Shira or Star Wars or whatever. Sometimes it's just gonna get phoned in a little bit. Yeah. So. I can't all be um, Da Vinci level. Yeah. I have a three ring binder that's filled with a bunch of my art from like 2007 to like 2015. And a lot of it, whenever I go through it, like I'll draw on anything, like notebook, paper, yeah. whatever, it doesn't matter. And a lot of them are just like this cool idea I had, but then I didn't finish it, but I kept it because I was like, maybe someday I'll finish it. Or, yeah. I used to sort of keep a lot of my care. I used to make up a lot of my own comic book characters. Mm -hmm. And so I used to have like stacks and stacks of like sort of character designs and yeah, same. Designs. I actually had one character I made that I had gotten some clay and I made a clay a clay bust of him. Yeah. And it looked really good. And I had it sitting in my room on my art table because I actually have a, an actual art uh, table. Yeah. And my mom had Kim come home from work and she came in my room and she was saying hi to me and she tossed her duffel bag oh, no. on my desk and crushed it. Oh. And I was like, mom, what the heck? And she literally turned to me and said, well, you should have put it somewhere safe. Oh, I'm no. like, it's in my room on my art table right. for well, art. Not as safe as it should have to be. Yeah. Oh, man. That's the worst. Yeah. I haven't really done much work with clay since. I, I've done a few things like... Uh, I actually have a bag full of that. Um, it it still hasn't hardened yet, but it's like that clay that um, once you expose it to air for like a couple of days, it finally does harden. Yeah. yeah. But it's just sitting in a sealed uh, plastic bag. I think I did a uh, baby Groot. Mm -hmm. I started doing, but then for some reason I stopped because, yeah, I, um. I get dis distracted easily. So like I'll yeah. start some and then I'll get another idea and it's like, ooh, and I start working on that. What happens? Yeah, I I do as well. That's so it's been interesting about sort of uh, doing all of the coloring videos. It's been really um It's almost been hard to do other things sometimes because I get so wrapped up in it in a way that I mm -hmm. usually am not. Usually by now I've lost interest and moved on to something else. And like, for whatever reason, like, if I don't, and it's sort of the, you know, like, because I've daily shorts, like I've been doing shorts every day, but that just happened because I wanted to put something up. I was like, I need to get yeah. up. Let me do a short. And I had already done a few on, um, like the first two or three were just ones I had already done on Instagram that I just re uploaded. I d deleted them from Instagram and then uploaded them on YouTube. Um, so, you know, that was the first few. And then, <clears throat> then I realized it would be really cool to do videos that weren't things I'd already done and put on YouTube, on Instagram, because the ones I had done on Instagram was just me sh trying to figure out how to do the camera stuff, you know, and mm -hmm. like how the time lapse worked and what things looked like. And it was before I was wearing, you know, sort of the glove to sort of help with uh, wrist pain, because, you know, I would do one and then I went oh, yeah. for weeks, so it didn't actually, it didn't matter. <laughs> Like then, if I draw or, or color for too long, my yeah. like hands will like start to shake. But yeah. since I won't stop until I'm finished, yeah, by the end of it, my hands cramping so bad. And then I get and I get eczema from time to time, so it's like I sort of yeah. figured out how I wanted them to look, and I was sort of planning some videos, and then I got the eczema breakout, and I'm like, nobody needs to see that on film. Right, I I have such that. dry scalp that like whenever. Uh, I am working on something I have to like dust off my desk. <laughs> uh, I've been there in the past. Luckily, not as much. 
still the hand every so often. And um, and then I was, you know, sort of having pain because I had done a bunch of them back to back. And then, so I got, I mean, this is technically just the glove, but it sort of, you know, just that yeah. extra bit of fabric makes a world of difference. And then, you know, if it's a phantom. I, opera, I actually need to get a glove. Cause like whenever I draw, mm -hmm. I usually draw left to right, yeah. but my hand will go across and it'll like smear, especially yeah. if I'm drawing like pencil. Yeah. So I like, I try teaching myself to draw right to left, but my brain and hand are just like, nope. I'm so happy. There's um, like this glove is gonna, like all of the gloves actually are going to need to go into the wash probably tomorrow. Cause they have, a little bit, but because of the kind of fabric this is, it doesn't smear it as bad. So mm -hmm. uh, with super dark colors, it will create issues sometimes, but not always. So, and that's just because I do background to front now. So I'm pretty good. I'm glad you picked these. This is a really cool page. I'm glad you picked yeah. this. Page. I just saw it and I was like, yeah, Disco Skeletor. Oh. I was also thinking of the 87 movie when he gets the power of the universe and Disco Skeletor to me is kind of that. Yeah, I always... Like he got of, power he shouldn't have. Yeah, I always kind of assumed that they were sort of riffing on... Because a couple of the He-Man costumes in 2000X, the variants kind of look like the movie costume a little bit. Mm-hmm. Even the heart, the regular He-Man harness is kind of built a little bit closer to that movie one. Yeah. So. Especially with the brown straps and stuff. Yeah. So I'd always kind of assumed that that, you know, was, if not the full intention, just sort of one of the intentions so that when you did watch the movie... It maybe didn't clash quite as much. And definitely 2000 and X hairstyle is closer to that. The featheriness of Dolph, Dolph Lundgren's hair in the movie. That movie was, we went and saw that like the weekend it came out. Yeah. My brother, you know, Princess of Power, Masters of the Universe. I was definitely disappointed there was no She Ra in it. Because um, I did expect that she would show up. Um, but we were pretty. I remember us leaving and thinking, wow, that was more like Star Wars than He Man. And then we went to the store and I'm like, you know, they had like King Randor and Clamp Champ and Ninjor and Scareglow and. Yeah, and of course we got all of those um, because we were spoiled. Mm -hmm. um, the only movie figure we had was my brother had um, Gwild he had the Gwildor, but otherwise we didn't have any of those. Mo we didn't get Blade or Sauron. I didn't have any of the movie ones. I never actually. Um, I don't. I don't think like besides the figures I had, I don't no. think I ever got newer ones. Until the new adventures show. Yeah. Because I definitely yeah, had some of those and I recall opening them. Yeah, my brother had a couple of the He Man. He didn't get any. I mean, there's also started hit. He was really into turtles when those the new adventures came out. So, <clears throat> you know, I still stand by the statement that if Mattel had made new adventures on the same buck as the original He Man, it probably would have sold better. Because I do remember my mom saying, I'm being sort of annoyed that, like, the He-Man didn't, he wasn't, like, the same as the other. So, that, like, because, you know, we had Eternity, we had Grace School, we had Snake Mountain. And I remember her being sort of annoyed because, you know, like, technically none of it was compatible or, you know, we had all those toys that this new He-Man didn't really work with. I was kind of okay. He worked with, um... Again, not that I was really playing with toys at the time, but I still had some of my Shira up for display, and he looked okay with the Shira figures. So mm -hmm. I didn't mind so much, but I do remember thinking that my mom definitely was sort of annoyed that it wasn't 
I, I, you know, she didn't say it this way, but it kind of feels like part of her issue was that it was like she had to buy a whole new toy line now instead of buying things to supplement the existing toy line. And I wonder at times yeah. if Mattel had made the new adventure stuff so that it at least fit with all the He-Man toys that people, you know, some of that stuff was still sitting in stores because they didn't clear it and ship the way they clear and stuff now. Like often it would just sit there until it sold. They might mark it down, but it was never really on clearance. And um, eventually it would end up, of course, at like KB Toys. But I don't remember any of the original He-Man toys going to... I remember New Adventures at KB, but I don't remember... I mean, they had Motu from when they were selling Motu brand new, but I don't remember them having pegs and pegs of it showing up discounted like all the other toy lines would show up at KB. And so, but I could be wrong. It might have just been RKB. But definitely was, I think, a mistake to not. Yeah. But of course, if they did, if they did that, then you wouldn't have the demo, Demolition Man figures. That is true. Yeah, those are pretty cool. I think my brother had one of them. But <clears throat> because he didn't have as many He-Man, I don't know if we put it together if they were the same toy line. I do remember he had a few Jurassic Park figures, and I do remember buying a Congo figure and realizing that the Congo, Car I think her name was Karen or whatever, because um, that was when I had started, I found her used. It was when I started, well, not used, marked down um, at KB Toys. Because <laughs> when Power of the Force came out and I started collecting again, that's when I started building my female action figure shelf. And I remember buying her and realizing that she was like sort of a little bit of some of the, the Jurassic Park Ellie figure, as well as I think... Um, the Ellen Ripley figure from the Alien storyline. She was a little bit, I think, of both of those. Mm. And I remember... I never just, had any of those. Yeah, I didn't have... Um, I had seen pictures of the Ellen Ripley. I need to get... I'll probably buy one of those this year. I'm going to sort of buckle down a little bit on my toy habits, as it were, and sort of <clears throat> pick up some of these things that I've wanted and never... Sort of lock down my collection because I'm a little bit all over the place right now. But it's time to sort of um, get the few last missing pieces of like vintage Kenner Star Wars and the last few vintage Strawberry Shortcake from Kenner that I need and uh, <clears throat> you know, like a few of the vintage G.I. Joe things that didn't survive. I want to get a few of those. And just sort of actually finish a bunch of collections so that I don't have like 30 half out. I'm yeah. not that I'm going to get the complete collection of like the GoBots or the GI Joes, but to get the ones that I want that I really liked. But so that I can finish. I actually have that. one GoBot. Yeah, I've got the one right now, Which... uh, Pathfinder. You know which one? Unless it disappeared have. somewhere. Uh, I remember. I used to think he was uh, Optimus Prime, but it was like a Hot Wheels or like something. Uh, Where'd he go? He had a bunch of those. I know people are often like, nobody had GoBots. It's like we had GoBots and we liked GoBots. Uh -huh. You get three GoBots for like the same amount as. <laughs> Actually, no Transformers because Transformers were too expensive. Like GoBots were like right. ninety nine, four ninety nine tops. Depending on oh, which I don't know where he went. Oh, well, <laughs> so. I thought he was within arm's reach. And all the GoBots were the same size. It wasn't like Transformers where some of them yeah. were bigger than the others. And they're all supposed to be the same damn toy line, but they're all different sizes. Not go about stay all matched. So. Oh, we even had because they had the two like the two power suit things where you put go bots into them and lock it together and they make like a big 
what was it? It wasn't it wasn't like Voltron, but it was like Voltron where like the power suits locked together to make a big robot. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had it was the same thing, but it was just like in white plastic and the other was in black plastic, so it was the good guys and the bad guys. We had all of those. Man, we were so spoiled when I think back about all the shit we had. Oh yeah, same. Not complaining. But no. <laughs> I know I definitely had a lot of the Kenner Bat Batman figures from like the early uh like from when the film came out. Yeah. My brother had most of those. Kenner I wasn't I was I was looking through them the other day. I'm like, oh I had that one, I had that one, I had that one. I did get the Toy Biz. When Toy Biz briefly did DC, I did have the Toy Biz uh, Storm, and then I did the Toy Biz Wonder Woman. And then I had the Batman Returns Catwoman. And those are sort of my only <clears throat> sort of action. Like, yeah, those are like my only sort of action figures I bought sort of at high school age. Um, but I was also a big comic book nerd at the time. And so sort of buying those, it wasn't really like I was buying toys so much as I was buying stuff to put with my, com you know, to sort of display my comic collection. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I, you know, I saw all of the superpowers stuff displayed and those went with it. And then Batman, the animated series came out and I got all of the villain. I had like Scarecrow and Catwoman and um, what was the other one? Was it Ivy? No, I didn't have the Joker. I didn't have. We couldn't find Poison Ivy. Um, wasn't Killer Croc? I think it was one of the other um, sort of Two Face. I, yeah, I had a Two Face. It was yeah, I think it was Two Face, Catwoman, Scarecrow, and there was one other that we had. And then my mom basically stole Scarecrow from me so she could put him up in her Halloween display. Huh. Every year he would go into the box of Halloween decorations. But I didn't know I had the. That's Catwoman. weird. I think it was maybe Matt. Was it? No, I don't think Matt Hatter was one of the first ones that came out. I'm going to Google it because now it's bothering me. Killer Croc? <laughs> no, I don't think he was one of the first ones. So let's see. Batman, the animated series, Wave 1, Toys, 1990s. No, stop trying to show me the McFarlane shit. Okay, Man Bat. It was Man Bat. Uh, and he would have been a... Mo so I think he also got stolen for the decorations. So I don't know. that I technically didn't have any of them. <laughs> My mom took him, half of them to display. Let's see. All right, here we go. Somebody's got all of them. Yeah, so it was Two Face, Scarecrow, Man Bat, Catwoman, and the Riddler. I had the Riddler. I did not have Penguin or the Joker, but that was because I still had superpowers, Penguin and Joker. And it was just about filling in the Batman's Rogues Gallery, even though I had the Batman Returns Catwoman. But that was different because it was Catwoman, so. But yeah, right. I mean, like, if I had wanted the Joker, because my, my mom, like, got those, I think, for Christmas or something for me that year. I mean, I was in college, so it was like, yeah, I was not spending money on toys at that point in college. I was spending my money on food and clothes, like any college co-ed would do, and beer, of course, whenever I couldn't find somebody to buy it for me. And going to movies and Star Wars books and comic books because I was still I was a co-ed nerd. And so but yeah, so yeah, it was the man bat and yeah, and he was a pretty cool figure, so 
I don't think I had any of the animated series figures. Not because I didn't want them. I just I just don't think I ever had them. Yeah. It was kind of but I remember I wanted the Bat uh, Batmobile so bad because that's like one of my favorite uh, designs. I like that really long, sleek look of it. Oh, wow. That's cool. <clears throat> yeah, so that was 93. So that was sort of the... Yeah, so it was the Ret Batman Returns Catwoman and then those figures and then nothing, no, real, no toys really until um, uh, Power of the Force. So, and then it, it's been toys ever since. Like that just sort of, when Star Wars Powers of the Force hit, that sort of ended the... Uh, yeah, because with a couple Batman things, I think it was easy to sort of pretend I wasn't. I'm not really collecting toys. I just have these. I'm far too cool for that. <laughs> Let's listen to the Jim Blossom. I think I bought toys till I was like 14, 15. Yeah. And then took a little break. It was mostly video games. Got heavily into World of War. Warcraft. Um, then kind of picked up a few random things here and there. And then, of course, really got back into it like 2018, 2019. Yeah. Well, no, probably. Well, I mean, if you count like a Gundam a model kits, but like. Yeah. So, like maybe 2016, 17. No, that's right. I forget you're young. <laughs> you're yeah. Young. I was born in 86. Yeah, so. Yeah, that was around the time I was... As far as Motu, I'm a baby. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it, and I say, it's funny, though, because in Motu, there are people sort of, sort of in the circles we run with who are a little bit older than we were at that point. So, well, older than I was, even. It's funny when I hear those stories, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Thankfully, I'm not the old. As long as Ed is with us, I'll never be the old. Right. I was the the baby until Kayla oh, came around. Right. She ruined everything. Well, it's funny, though, because, like, she, you know, she just hit sort of a big marker, and I was like, you're the young one. She's like, I'm not young. I'm like, comparatively, yes, you are. So enjoy it, because it goes fast. And next year, mm -hmm. somebody else will come along that will be the youngest one, and then you'll be old like the rest of us. Yep. It goes so fast. <laughs> that's what, what's, I mean, that's what I enjoy, though, about Oz's, you know, sort of Saturday hangout stuff is, I don't know, it's just a nice eclectic group. There are people who sort of pop in and pop yep. and it's usually a pretty chill group. I don't know. I mean, I could be... Obviously, there's stuff that I'm not aware of, but as far as I know, like, nobody who's actually shown up, at least in the time I've been coming around, is particularly dramatic or... Nope. ...has created a shitstorm. So, don't know what happened before me, but since I've been coming around... I mean, there are people who pop into chat who are assholes, but that's just the internet. There was that one... Uh invite anyone that didn't go so well yeah, but that besides was, that yeah that was my first night uh, get jumping online with nice the clubhouse and i i did when that happened sort of have that moment of huh that was interesting so initiation <laughs> as it were right no not even a particularly good one just it's just i don't know it was so weird to me that people, it takes a lot of effort to sort of do something like that, like to, you know, jump on a stream and then sort of hijack it so that you can, you know, show something on your screen that maybe people don't want to see. All right. It seems really odd that 
and that's all you have going for you on, you know, on a Saturday night or whatever when people are just sort of hanging out, chilling, having a good time at the end of their week, and you got to sort of slide in the asshole of the year. Literally. Literally. <laughs> You came in to drop shit all over the place. How dare you, sir? How dare you? But, yeah, uh, so. It was quite interesting. You won't be making that mistake again. Yeah, I can't, well, it only has to really happen once, I think. Well, it happened, like, twice. I, but it was the I same, the same night. night. The same night. It was the same guy both times. It's just the second time he actually jumped on there himself, it looked like. Yeah. As soon as he jumped on, the way he was acting, I'm like, uh-oh. I could tell something was off. I'm getting there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I should really quickly. I'm going to. I should. This is the part of the show normally where I do a solo layout so you can see your work. Looking good. Nice. Yeah, I can definitely tell I haven't done this in a while. But slowly, as I'm going more and more into it, I'm starting to pick up. Uh, well, yeah, like a few see, things. Yeah. Well, I can, well, like with the bricks, you're shading them, and you know. Yeah. It's sort of how it works, like. Like I always like to get the base color in and then go in and shade. You don't get to this sort of where I'm sort of out with it right now. It doesn't, not even for me, like I said earlier, it took me a while to get sort of into the mindset of, you know, not just sort of coloring it really flat and sort of getting in there with different shades and giving it textures and nuance. And it takes a little bit. I'll have to, I'll have you back for another pre-record, and then we'll we'll do other pages and stuff. And yeah, I know I was showing you that uh, bebop and that TMNT bebop and rock steady picture. I think would look pretty cool. Oh yeah, I've got that one still. Pr I printed out all the ones you had picked. I printed out, so they're over there. Well, not a, over there, but over there where you can't. <laughs> I have yeah. like a, a green. Um, one of those sort of plastic file folders with the snap on it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's actually a purple one. Let me do this. Um, so, like in here, I have all the pages that um, people have. Because I have people, as you know, pick a couple pages and then I just print them all out so we can color whatever. There are a couple of a couple in there right now from up for upcoming things that that's why I, didn't, I just flipped it on the back because um, one of them is for this week and it's technically not a surprise but at the same time it's I don't want to necessarily ruin the surprise. This will actually air, yeah. after, so it doesn't matter. It, it's like Eldor is going to be on on Sunday, and yes. in that ca Castle Grace. We're going to have the nightlight on so, the shelf. That'll be cool. Glows. It looks realistic. And so, anyway. But yeah, so I printed all, sort of all the pictures that you picked. I printed them all out. Um, so we definitely, I'll just keep them, you know, in the folder and we'll line up another time once we're done oh. tonight. You know how I was talking about that brief, uh, Three three ring binder. Yeah. See if I can show how thick this oh, yeah. thing is. Yeah, it's like a little kind of oh, nice. leathery briefcase. Just That's cool. filled. I'm I'm not gonna go through them because like you know, <laughs> but I want to show you how like thick it is. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Paper wise. And of course I have tons of stuff in like um bunch of random sketch pads. But yeah. all the loose papers go into here. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Ow, that just fell on the foot. <laughs> well, there's been a couple. Well, that, yeah. And 
Duh, I know that. There have been um, at least two pieces that you've had me color of yours for stuff, so. Yeah. So I do like from ink work, mostly pencil. Yeah. Just a, I'll show one random one. Oh, wow. That's really so I did my own. So I did this before the current Superboy was uh, yeah. done. This was like 2011. Well, yeah. maybe next time instead of doing one of these old coloring pages, maybe you should use like I don't know. I don't. We we'll definitely talk, but yeah, we could. We should probably color because that was really that was really good, but like. And then I did a little marker work, like I do color pencil and marker. Yeah. I was draw designing like uh, Superman suits, which funny enough, this one pretty much looks like the uh, Man of Steel, but I did this in like 2010. Yeah. Oh wow. And that is really good. So like, there's just a whole bunch of just random stuff. Well, but I figure since this is a uh, coloring stream it'd be okay to show off a few coloring sure. yeah, no. that's totally okay oh colored pencil <laughs> that's really good but yeah, yeah next and of course we'll... you you've seen the flash drawing that i did yeah, yeah next we'll we'll talk and figure it out but next time we'll find something you've drawn and color that yeah i think actually this one would be kind of cool yeah, that's yeah, that's a few cool. others. Well, and also, I have some like Warcraft characters, and uh, yeah, there's just a whole bunch, just yeah. unfinished, random drawings. Yeah. All right, oh, that uh, comic book character that I drew. Yeah, that uh. I made the bust of. Yeah. That got destroyed. Oh, wow. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, still makes me sad looking at them. <laughs> well, yeah. It would. But yeah, I think for like sketchbooks, I have like 10 of them that are just filled with whatever whatever i was drawing at the time yeah all different sizes and i even have a couple hard covered ones which right now one of my hard covers is used as a um prop to hold up one of my uh shelves for my figures because i wanted it to be leveled with all the other shelves and i needed yeah. something uh thick <laughs> These are really cool. Though. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been drawing pretty much since I was like two. That's and like cool. one of my, one of my first drawings, like big drawings I did was, uh, it was a flip book. Yeah. Now, granted, I did this when I was like, I think three. And it was of the 1989 Batman film when he's opening up the vault door and the bat suit is behind the door. Yeah. yeah. And I literally drew like page by page of the door like opening and the suit being there. And that was just, yeah, awesome. <laughs> that sounds really cool. Yeah, we'll do that next time. Instead of doing an old coloring book, we'll find some of your art or. Maybe you'll yeah. find something you want to draw, or I don't know. Like, no pressure there, but yeah, we'll play. I'll go through a bunch of my stuff. Yeah, because I definitely, you know, like these pre records are fun for me, but also, you know, like every so often, either somebody gets sick, i.e., me, or, mm, or me, or, <laughs> you know, need to take a day out. You know, like some of these pre records are so that I can. Um, take a little time off and, and, or two and do a little traveling. So it's good to have something because, you know, like in the YouTube algorithm, if you do something regularly and you break that too often, yeah. you know, it beats you. 
So definitely happened to me. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I was trying to put out a video every two weeks and it turned to be a month and then there was definite couple month break. Yeah. I was really trying to figure out how I wanted to move going forward. And then I just got to being lazy and then just wanting to paint something. But then I was like, Oh, I should save it for a video. But then I was like, no, but I really want to paint. And so I'll just paint. Even, sort of before I did, well, I never thought this, but before I started this, I would, um, you know, there are people who make videos that I watched way before I started making videos or being on YouTube. And they would talk about how, like, how you get burned out or, you know, like, you mm -hmm. constant pressure to always be making. Yeah. So I sort of came into this knowing that that was part of it. So I've, you know, I've got quite a bit of stuff sort of backlogged. I made a bunch of stuff before I started releasing anything. Um, the issue I'm having right now is I've, I've been releasing stuff a little bit too much. Um, so like something will just be landing in the algorithm and then I'll release something else. Um, full length videos, not shorts. Shorts are, you know, sh usually have a pretty short lifespan and they don't really affect your long-term stuff because it's too different. The people who like my shorts and watch my shorts are not always the same people who watch the longer videos. So it's not a good mm -hmm. over, but, um, and with the shorts, I can go, you know, like there's stuff, like sometimes stuff will just belly flop and get no views. And then two weeks, yeah. later, two weeks later, that short will all of a sudden get like a hundred views. So like shorts are really different, but for the longer stuff, like if I, I released, um, again, we're recording this in the past when you watch this. So my video with, that I did with Ken for Delta 17 just came out. It's doing pretty good. Um, it's not doing as well as it could be doing because YouTube is still pushing my house for graceful video, which is still doing really well. So I'm still getting lots of watch hours on that every day. Um, so, but because of that, because they're pushing grayscale, they're not really pushing right now as of this recording. The adults, it could be completely different by the time this airs. Um, so I was just sort of realizing that, you know, there is a, you do have to release things regularly, but you also sort of, until you hit that sweet spot with the algorithm, you also can't release stuff too often or it'll, the algorithm will kill one video or the other, so. Yeah. But, you know, that's how you learn. You get out and having the backlog of stuff isn't bad. It's good to have that evergreen catalog. That, do you know during the pandemic there were people i would see one video by them and enjoy it and then i go watch three other videos by them and then three days later i'd watch every video they had ever made <laughs> and i've i've seen that happen with my shorts i'll you know like i'll get a new subscriber via shorts and all of a sudden all of my shorts will have like a new watch you know like two or three new watches as somebody goes through them and then some of that will then push the old shorts back into the algorithm so I get more views on it. So shorts are definitely easier than the longer form content in some ways. So anyway, but you know, I'm I'm grateful that you were willing to do a pre-record so that I can take Yeah, actually it's off. a lot <laughs> kind of less pressure than doing live. Yeah, it can be like it's, um, it's weird. Like at first, I would have preferred this all, and now it's to a point where I kind of like both. I like doing sort of this when it's not a live stream, but I also enjoy almost enjoy the live stream now. But it mm -hmm. also took a while to get there, and took a little while to get to the point where I didn't feel like I wanted to throw up every time the live stream started. So, yeah, a little behind the scenes for the people uh, listening and watching this in the future. Um, it's just, and it's not even like, I don't know. It's just, it's sort of, a, it's pressure, even when you know there's only like five or six people, especially when you start and you've only got a couple people who are watching, like, it's still a weird pressure to like perform. Yeah. It's like with this, if I say something sh stupid and that would get me canceled, I can just go in and cut it out. Um, in a live stream, you have to hope that not everybody was watching or paying enough attention and you can pull it before 
anybody else downloads it or records it. So not that I make it a habit of, you know. <laughs> right. but you never, you never know. It's a weird world where you don't yeah. know what to say it could be taken the wrong way or come out wrong or whatever the case may be. Definitely the era of things being taken out of context. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then you get people who like try to hunt for reasons to cancel people. Well, you do, and it's because yeah. that definitely is a thing. That's totally a thing. Yeah, or you get people who are like ready to pounce, you know, like yeah. So yeah, and it doesn't. I don't know. It's weird. I can tell you back when we first got the internet in our lives, it was not something we first saw. There, you know, like no. that, even there was there was a lawlessness to the internet. Like back then you could say shit on the internet and nobody even knew it was you half the time. All right. Those old ASL chat rooms. Oh my god. Or AOL. MSN or whatever it was. AOL, yeah. I was thinking ASL because, like, you would do the um, when you would do the chat room, or yeah. especially with with me, like being a teen, you'd always introduce yourself by uh, uh, your name, yeah, then right. age, sex, location. Yeah. yeah. Which nowadays that's a horrible thing to do, like to say, yeah, "Hey, horrible. I'm this age, no, male I'm... from this state or the city." It's like, yeah, no. Yeah, definitely. It's just so different. I mean, and back then, though, it wasn't as easy to track you down through the internet because not everyone right. was on, you know, like even addresses and stuff. It's like now everything is sort of on the internet. Back then, like, you needed to find someone's address. Good fucking luck. Like, right. Like, you I still, I still recall, like, I was trying to visit a friend's house. I didn't know where he lived, so I literally had to call infor information to try to find it because he wasn't in the phone phone book. I remember it was MapQuest, I think, like when I lived in Texas. Like, no, it was sort of I was going to visit a friend in Austin, and they had just done all this construction, and they kept trying to send me to her house. Um, and through a the embankment for like one of those overpasses that like connects you up to the highway, so it was mm -hmm. like a solid thing of concrete. And the road ended there because it used to be a road, but they had like about a year before had changed it. But MapQuest hadn't updated in like that year, and they kept trying to tell me I had to go through that concrete, and it was like. Luckily, I wasn't, you know, I was smart enough to pay a little bit more attention and be like, wait, it's going to take me right into that concrete. And so that was when I was trying to get to the part <laughs> where Natalie Portman was filming that Where the Heart Is movie right after episode, because I was trying to find episode one toys, um, but she was filming the um, Where the Heart Is at that Walmart, so... That was weird going in there like to buy Star Wars toys knowing Natalie Portman might be around any corner with a fake belly full of pregnant baby stuff. So. But yeah, my friend the only movie that. we've had where someone was filming something nearby the next town over, Johnny Depp was filming public enemies. Oh well. Oh, well. It was like that nineteen twenties yeah. gangster movie. Yeah, because this area of Wis Wisconsin uses, or they have those like really old brick uh, mm. buildings and stuff, and they actually had an old style like nineteen twenties bank. So it was like the perfect place to film. Yeah, at that time Austin was huge. Like there were they were filming a lot of movies. <laughs> I did some extra work for a while. But they had filmed the faculty. Um, Robert Rodriguez was doing a movie like um, I'm trying to th like Sandra Bullock did Miss Congeniality there. Um, I'm trying to think what else filmed. There was just a lot of stuff that came there at the time. And um, 
you know, I just, like I said, I did some extra work. It was not, it's not the glamorous job, it seems like. I can tell you that. Yeah. But it was not bad money, and they fed you, and I got to meet a few celebrities. So, definitely not um, sort of the worst. Definitely not quite as exciting as, you know, like most people think. I would do it again, though, because it was, like I said, it was pretty fun. It is kind of nice to see how that, how stuff gets made. Like, yeah. It's sort of one of those things where you don't often realize all that goes into a movie until like you're actually on the set and see sort of all the little stuff that has to happen. So, but yeah, they they didn't sort of the Austin area film a lot back. Then. I had a bunch of fil films, a bunch of friends who were extras on um, Varsity Blues and. Was, a fun time in Austin. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, I got a call to be an extra for Varsity Blues. That was right around the time I think I was moving out of Texas. So, could be wrong. I could have the timing slightly off. But I feel pretty confident that that was sort of in the window. But I did a couple beer commercials and a couple extra oh. work. I did extra work and stuff. So. Paid minimum wage. Oh. Third. Overnight. If you filmed overnight, it was like double. Time. <clears throat> they did a lot of the overnight to get the extra money and Yeah, I don't know. It was it was what it was. That's cool. Yeah, I don't think I could do it now just because, you know, I'm old. <laughs> and a lot of it is I think the thing that a lot of people don't get about movies is a lot of it is literally just sitting around waiting and then you film for you know especially as an extra you're going to film maybe in 5-10 minute increments if you're lucky I mean you know, on set, like I, one of the nights I was on set for like well nights it was like two or three nights back to back I was there from like sunset to sunrise, and they filmed maybe t ten minutes of actual footage that was in the movie. I mean, I'm sure some of it got cut, but when I went and saw that movie, there was only like ten minutes from where I was, and some of it wasn't even filmed because it was like close ups and stuff of the actors. It probably wasn't even what we filmed, so it could have been even less that it took all those nights and all that money to film. So. There you go. That's why Hollywood it takes millions of dollars because of the inefficiency of their filming schedules back then. I don't know if it's still like that. But back then, you'd sit around for hours and hours. I know uh, one of Kevin Smith's podcasts for uh, Fat, Fat Man Beyond, he was talking yeah. about filming for uh, Jay and Silent Bob 2. Mm -hmm. And he had his friend Mark uh, coming as in as an extra and they were doing their day of filming and he had to sit around for like 10 hours and then they filmed for like maybe 20 20 minutes yeah that, but he had to sit and wait yeah in costume sometimes like mm -hmm. extra the scene was at a comic con i don't think he was in outfit but no yeah, I mean, depends on what it is, but I can't imagine many scenarios at this point where I would be going to sort of sit around for hours and hours and hours for for minimum wage or less. They'd have to have really good craft. They'd have to feed me, and the craft services would have to be really good. So, yeah. Oh. 
Um, I'm about, well, I'm just getting there. Hour. We're just hitting the two hour mark. It's almost perfect. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm actually, like, I kind of want to color harder, but I'm also, like, not quite there yet with, like, trusting myself again. Well, also, like, there's this thing that I often, um, I've sort of learned to break myself of, but it's like, there's a thing where it's like, you're sort of having a good time, but also you're not, you're still too close to it to see that there's not really anything else that needs to be done to it. So you just kind of keep going and then you go too far and it's too much and it's not great. Um, I've gotten a lot better. Uh, these live streams have actually helped. Um, mm -hmm. Again, this is a pre-record, but you know, it's still the basic structure of when I do a live stream. But they've helped because it's like sort of have to get the basics, but it also needs to work. It needs to look good. It needs yeah. to you know. So, so I actually like, went in with the purple and shaded over the black and it actually looks really oh, nice. Oh wow. I'm Especially gonna, on the legs. Well when we're at the end, so let me make it I'm gonna put you in solo layout so that you <laughs> where the hell? There you go. That looks really good, but I like it. Yeah. It's not bad for not coloring for a couple years. <laughs> um, well, it's really good. Like, not even not bad for not having oh. color. It's good. Like, I'm my own worst uh, critic. So, like, I have very that. high standards for my art. Right? No, and no, it's, no. it's kind of a bad thing if I see someone... Like, if they post a custom or a drawing and it's better than mine, I will not post mine. Just because I feel like it's not good enough next to them, even though it's not something you should really compare yourself with, you know, yeah, like... It's too different. You like, the way you do yeah. it is completely different than the way they'll do it. So, um, when this video goes live, like, well, you do need to post yours. Uh, and tag me, and I'll tag you when I post mine. All right. That whole promotional thing that people do. I quickly pop mine up there. Yeah, yours looks really good. That purple is like very vintage. Yeah, I ch I ch found. Um, did did you do the green on on, on the chest? No. Yep, I did. I did do some nice. green on the chest. Because yeah. literally, I got him sitting right here. Yeah, I had to fix it a little because it was looking a little too Batman-y. and it's still yeah. like a little too Batman, but. It's so small, there's not a lot. I mean, I could have gotten mm -hmm. a pen and fixed it, but I have to try to, um, I know my goal with these is to not do much of an alteration to the original art and just try to make it cool with the coloring. Um, yeah. You know, I guess that's kind of why also I did the disco look, because I just wanted yeah. it to be unique and a little more different. Yeah. I sort of put some planets there and sort of pop that all out. Yeah, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do for mine. I just kind of put a blue sky and then it kind of fades to white yeah. like there's I mean, some clouds or something. I have come to a point where if it's uh, She-Ra or He-Man Gotta have planets and stuff of, everywhere. <laughs> any sort of sky, I just throw some planets and like some weird clouds yeah. or a star or whatever. Um, oh, so I would... I would love to find a coloring page of one of the fil filmation back backgrounds yeah. and color uh, myself. Um, like that would oh, that would be fun. Yeah, I have. Well, okay, really quick. I mean, we've got a moment or two. Yeah, because uh, it's a pretty part. <laughs> right. We don't have a specific time we have to be off, and yeah. if there's a specific time, it can be edited down. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. You can probably cut out of the um, baggie full of uh, dust bit. <laughs> you can go ahead and cut that one. <laughs> yep. Well, I have some pictures that are from a vintage Duchess. book. Stop squeaking your toy. <laughs> She just loves her bone. 
She's like, oh, Bud's recording. I'm going to be as loud as possible. <laughs> She's just a baby. Okay, so here we go. So this is... Ooh. Yeah, so this is... I, I have, I'll have. i send this to you. Um, but it's. I would just like to color that on the side, yeah. Yeah, so it's got like the basics of the Chris, um, Chris, of the Whispering Woods. So there's like the little mm -hmm. puffy things. Um, but in the ground is empty and the sky behind is, and you've got a phone, but like you could literally go in with this and do, but it does have like the filmation trees from Princess of Power. So, so I actually thought the trees were the background and the three blank spaces in the background were like pillars. Because you know how like the sky usually has the swirls and stuff in it? Yeah. Well, you could also do them. I mean, that's the nice thing about the way this is. If you did it just a certain way, yeah. you can do it like that. So also, oh, I'll this and a crystal it. palace yeah. picture to color would be yeah. magical. Oh yeah, I've got. I have an old. You know, I have a coloring book that has the vintage. It's the toy. Um, I don't think any of the coloring books have the actual. Um, I'll hook you. I've got some of the rest stuff. It's ridiculous. That's sort of how it, it started with strawberry shortcake and Shira and the rest of it just sort of. While I was looking for those books, all of these other books came along and Star Wars. She was like, hey, you love Star Wars. You always love Star Wars. Do Star Wars. And here we are. All right. So we'll go at, we should go ahead and wrap this up for the people at home yeah. in the future. Um, Normally, this is where we do a specific like, where to find everyone next, but because it's a little bit in the future, that will be off. So, um, Bud, where can they find your channel? And you so you can find my channel on YouTube. It's called My My Buddies Customs. Also, find me on Instagram under the same name. Um, I guess I'm on Twitter or X, but I do not use it. <laughs> and I'm on Facebook. You can't search for for my buddy's customs, but if you type in Bud, I guess I'm gonna say say my name here, but Bud Porter, okay. uh, that is the page that I use for my figures. Okay, yeah, very good. Um, and when this goes live, I will have links to your YouTube ch channel so people can oh. find that in your work. Um, and also tick 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 tock also sorry TikTok, I almost forgot. Oh, sorry i can't say any more of the kesha song right now right you know, <laughs> i don't even think tick tick tock can actually finish singing the song either yeah probably not after because that, that cracked down yeah <laughs> right where they lost the thing so um so yeah and then of course you can find me here retro toy princess alice and troy um, when this airs, I should still be doing shorts regularly with coloring, and there's a weekly coloring video of some sort at this point in the future, and sort of toy things, and a weekly live stream on Sundays at 11 a.m., or in some cases, such as this, a pre-record for that time, but either way, um, I'm here, and I thank you for watching, and I thank Bud for joining me and talking. And thank Bud you so much for having me. Oh yeah, and he'll be back with her. We're, we're going to color some of his original art, so it's even yes. more exciting. In the meantime, thank you for Duchess talking. also says goodbye as she squeaks her toy. No, she's <laughs> Puppies. Well, um, we will see you in the next one. Um, Retro Toy Kids are out. Bye.